shortly. Just waiting for confirmation here that I actually see myself. Hey, there we are. Hey, Mark here at Whole Latte Love. Thanks for joining me for our live stream today. We're going to show you how you can, you know, go to the next level with some uh, pro brewing accessories. Um, so we're going to take a look at shower screens, filter baskets. I've got a new distributor and leveler I'm working with here. We still are doing the social distancing, so I've got my wife here cutting a show. I've got a couple cameras so we can get you close. Uh, just a quick shout out to my three daughters, their significant others, and of course my favorite grandson, my only grandson, Levi, is a year and a half, great age, but haven't gotten to quite spend the time I want to with them. And my mom and dad, Karen and Ted, who are maybe watching? I don't know. Um, so, we, I will be doing some bottomless shots uh, coming up a little bit uh, later here. Um, and, but first, uh, what I want to do is talk about shower screens. Now, been watching me or watching any of my recent live streams, I've kind of alluded to how much I like the IMS shower screens. So I'm going to show you how to take out the stock shower screen, show you why the uh, IMS Nanotech shower screen is so much better, and we're going to use a new silicone group gasket too. So let's get right to that. So got my Pro 700 over here. We'll be using that for uh, our bottomless shots later. So. To get out the stock shower screen, all I'm going to do, screwdriver, kind of lever it up under. And depending on how long yours has been in there or what kind of condition your group gasket is in, this may be more difficult to do. So there's my stock screen and gasket. Um, and I'm going to replace that with a Cafe Works silicone gasket. And that's getting a little warm, so I'm going to set that down. Um, but first, oh, you know what? I got to put that back in because I want to show you. I totally forgot about that. So let me get that back in there. Because I want to show you what the flow looks like out of the stock gasket. So I'm going to make a little bit of a mess. So if we can look at this right here. And now look at the flow. So you kind of get pretty much a solid stream out of there with this. Now remember what that looks like because it's going to look very different once I change that shower screen out. So let me get that back out of there. There we go. And I'm going to, now this one is nice and hot. I want to show you the difference between an IMS screen and the stock shower screen. So I've got another stock shower screen here. Um, look at, this is nice and flat. It, the stock screens, they actually have a real live screen in there. Um, so these are going to collect coffee uh, grinds and oils, and they're very difficult to clean. These are so smooth. Um, it's got a nanotech coating, and I don't know if you can see it on that. It's kind of, kind of a rainbow effect to it. Now, it's not nanoparticles, so don't get worried about that. It's a quartz coating that goes on here that's incredibly smooth. So let's put this one in, and I want to show you the difference in the flow. Again, I'm going to use this silicone uh, gasket here. This yellow one is the E61 size that works with this machine. So I'm just going to pop that on. And these go in nice and easy, one of the things I like about it. So I'm just going to push it up in. Try not to burn myself. Sometimes you have to go in and kind of push, especially with the harder uh, stock gaskets. They can be a little difficult to get in. These usually go in pretty quick, so if you just set them in, then crank on your portafilter and get it in place. And with these silicone gaskets, let me show you. So I got up a variety right here. Um, the yellow one I just used, the orange one, which goes for, and I can tell you, we got them for just about everything. Orange is for like a Bazzara BZ group, uh, Expo Bar, and a Gaja Classic. Then I've got the red here for La Marzocco and Slayer, and the blue is a Nuovo Simonelli and a couple other brands uh, that that'll work for. So if you want to replace your group gasket, and let me show you the difference here. So here's like a stock gasket, right? And it's kind of that hard rubber. And when I've taken these out before, if you leave them in too long, I mean, you're actually taking out chunks, but they get hard and hard, you know, and then it's hard to clock in and you don't get the seal you want, then it's time to replace it. But let's take a look at the flow. So I've got the that new shower screen in there, that's very, very smooth, so it can't pick up stuff. And they're so easy to clean, like literally wipe these and they clean up. So, but let's take a look at that flow. And what I want you to notice is now we have drips coming from all parts here, not a solid stream. So your puck is going to be saturated evenly when you go to pull your shot. It makes a really big difference. I really, really like these a lot. So again, uh, different and they're silicone, they don't get hard, um, very nice. Now, as far as the shower screens, um, I put in one for an E61, 
but I've got, uh, we have them for the Sylvia, uh, and I think that goes for Bedzera too. You, you can put in a Gaja Classic, like a premium entry level machine. And what's the other one for here? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, like a Casa the CL, what this one says CL on it right here. Um, that is for a Casa 5, ECM Casa 5, or a, a Profitech Pro 300. And those have, you can, if, if you can see it, it's got that kind of that rainbow sheen to it. And that's that nanotech coating. That's why, if you can see it, why it says NT on here for nanotech. So that's really nice. Um, we'll get to those bottomless shots in a second. Now let's talk about the filter baskets. And I'm going to get my, because I'm going to be taking a shot here. I'm using an 18 gram uh, nanotech, and we're going to go bottomless. And if you haven't uh, done bottomless shots before, they can be very instructive of your technique. So you can see the espresso develop from the bottom. You can see if you have channeling based on squirts or dead spots in your puck. Hopefully mine are going to turn out really well today. I'm taking a little risk doing this live. But I'm going to leave that in there to warm up. Another thing, just a reminder, you know, always wipe these down before you put them back and keep your stuff clean up in there. Because if you crank the coffee against your gasket, you're going to wear out the gasket first uh, faster. I don't like to crank them in real hard when they're just warming. A lot of times I'll turn a machine off, come back the next day, and if it's been cranked in hard, a lot of times it's going to pull your filter basket or hold it. He'll pull you out and your filter basket will be stuck up in there and then you got to dig it out. I don't like that. So let's take a look. I'll bring these over here. So you have these Barista Pro baskets. We also have uh, IMS Precision baskets. Um, so I'll show you these. I have a, some nanotech, some non-nanotech. Non the doubles come uh, 15. 18, 20, 22, so all the way up to a triple shot. Again, you can see maybe that kind of rainbow coating in there. So it's got that same quartz treatment to the basket. Another thing I like about these compared to like a stock filter basket is the sides are straight down. There's no like indentation going into the basket, no, nothing on the side, nothing to disturb the flow of water. Um, these are precision baskets and they come in those different sizes. I've got the singles over here. Now, I don't do a lot of singles, but there's something kind of cool with the Barista Pro baskets if you do. Um, but these are labeled, I'm going to show you on the side. So you see on this one right here, I don't know if you can see that really well, but it says uh, 220, or it says 22661NT. So the 22, that's a millimeter in height. 661 is the number of holes. NT is for nanotech. So it's the number of holes. And this is made in Italy. Um, it says Barista Pro on the other side, uh, but they come, so what happens though with the singles, they've been engineered so if you pull doubles and singles, the deal is you don't have to change grind size. So for instance, this single goes down to 269 holes, but they're specifically engineered so you're going to get about the same timing, or at least that's a theory, without changing the grind size if you go to pull singles. So that's kind of nice. Again, I don't do too many singles. In fact, it's incredibly rare, um, but you can do that. So the other thing I want to talk about today, got that in there, we're going to talk about some Akaya scales. And I've got a couple here. I've got, this is the lunar scale right here. Um, these are really nice. These are excellent, excellent scales. I've been using them for a long time. And I've got the really, they're like mini Pixis here. Um, I'm going to use this just to weigh my shot. Now these, I do have a link down in the description where I did a bunch of triple shots using some flow control. So you can connect these to like a Kaya's Brewmaster app and then you can totally log your shot. So it will uh, start recording time when espresso first drips into the cup. It can automatically tear and you can log your shot and your flow rate, take some notes and get the timing. You can keep those to see, you know, maybe what a grind size change did or, or something like that. I'm not going to do that today. There is a link down in the description that shows you that Brewmaster app in operation where I pull a series of uh, bottomless triples, I think it was. Um, with the uh, Pixis here, it's really cool. It comes with this nice little case, so if you travel and do your thing, um, that protects it. You can fit it right in a pocket like that. I like that. Um, both the uh, Lunar and the Pixis here, they come with a calibration weight. It's 100 grams, and the Pixis weight is accurate to 1 one hundredth of a gram the lunar to one-tenth of a gram, but very versatile. Also with the lunar, you're going to get this pad. Now what this is really for is, you know, if you set your scale up here and you're going to weigh your shot, if you're doing brew ratios, and if you're going to go pro, you really want to start doing some brew ratios to put your shot glass on. But I've got another really cool use for this. I like it. I put it on my uh, scale like this. 
then if I'm using a bottomless portafilter or even the double spouted, it allows you to weigh the portafilter real easy. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to have it tear. And it tears when it turns on. I could automatically tear it here. So now I've weighed my portafilter. I do. I'm going to weigh it just one more time. We got a little moisture in there. I don't like dosing into a wet portafilter. So I'll tear that. Okay, great. Now, I'm using a Chiato E37S grinder. Um, I've got this set to three and a half seconds. I dialed in a couple hours ago to try, I'm going to do a one to two brew ratio. So I'm going to use about 18 and a half grams of coffee. Um, these are very, very accurate. Well, we're going to find out. So I'm going to grind. I love the distribution, the speed, the quality of the grind on this. And let's see how this grind did. And I set it up for 18 and a half. I'm at 18.7, two tenths of a gram. I'm fine with that. Um, so let's go, and I'm going to show you the Bravo tools. Now, I was on a uh, Zoom call with Danilo Lodi, who's a WBC, that's World Barista Championship judge, I think since 2011. He's a coffee pro. He does lots of barista training. And he really loves these Bravo distributors and tampers. Now, been watching my videos. I know somebody already made a comment that I sometimes use a leveler and don't tamp at all. Well, this, that's because the leveler I use can compress the coffee when I do it. This distributor does not. If you look at it, and I'm going to do a live stream on getting the perfect puck. I'm going to do that next Tuesday at 1. So this distributor's got like a piston in here. So it drops down. So, and I was using this a couple days ago, and I'm new. I've only been using this about a week. I don't have it completely set up exactly maybe the way I want it, but I did get some tips from Danilo this morning, so I'm going to share with you next week. So with this, just set it on my coffee. And the idea with this, and when I used it before, I didn't do the clockwise. Okay, pulling it forward so you can see. I didn't do the clockwise first. So what you're supposed to do is spin this clockwise first. And that's going to spread the coffee out to the edges. And then you spin counterclockwise. And then that flattens everything out. And again, this is not compressing the coffee because that, that piston can go up and down. And that is adjustable, the speed of how that moves up and down. So this is, these are really high tech. They're kind of actually expensive, but you know, good tools are always worth the money in my opinion. So I'm just going to pull that out. And what that is, so since this lays on the top of your portafilter, um, it's always going to be even. And I like the little stands they have here to hold them in. Now here's the tamper. Now um, this is a wood handled one. We don't have these quite yet. We have the black ones, but we have them in 54 and a half, which is this one. I can't use that on this 58 millimeter basket. And this 58.5 millimeter, which fits very nicely into a 58 millimeter Barista Pro basket. And I like this. Again, it's calibrated. Okay. So you can change the uh, pressure you're going to get when you push down, but it does have that rim. So no matter how you tamp, like I can set it in here. I'm not worried about bringing my, my uh, portafilter up or down. I can literally just push and I'm done. And you can change the pressure that you get when you get all the way to the bottom. Now, I always say what you want to be is consistent. I don't really care what pressure you use. It should be firm. But, I, you know, the old 30-pound thing, I don't know. I'm not such a subscriber to that. Just be consistent. And a tool like that helps you to be consistent. I'm going to wipe that out. And I'm going to load that up and we're going to see how we do. Again, I'm doing this live, so never know what's going to happen. But the bottomless portafilter is really going to help you with your technique. So if I don't have my tamper set up quite right, I know maybe I'll need to make a change. So I'm going to get this on, just press the power button. Um, we'll talk about this. I'm going to use a shot pitcher here. And you'll find out why it's so important to use brew rate, if, to use a scale if you're doing brew ratios. I'm going to tear that. I could set this up to auto tear. Um, I'm not doing that right now. Um, so I'm going to let the shot go. Now, I dialed in earlier. I was looking to get a uh, to, uh, 1 to 2 ratio in about 25 seconds. So let's see what happens. Now, I'm going to watch my shot as it develops here. And hopefully this goes well. I'm looking for even development. And I had a little spurt there, just minor, another little minor one. So I'm watching my shot. I'm watching my weight. I'm going to stop this at just a little under 36 grams because it's still flowing. I'm at 30 right now. It's coming maybe just a little fast, and I'll stop it right there. So that was a little fast. Now, I did dial in my grind just a little, uh, maybe two hours ago. I'm kind of under the hot lights. Might have changed a little bit. Uh, but I got 20 seconds, 38 grams. It is a nice-looking shot. I do want to taste because I haven't had enough espressos today. Mm. Not bad. So what I would do is come over on my E37S and go just a little finer. We'll pull another one in a minute here. So I'm going to go a little bit finer. 
I'm going to knock this out for now. And I do see just a tiny little hole there. So I may need to work with my tamper just a little bit to get it the way I want it. So I'm going to wipe that out. I do like stuff clean. And we'll pull another one in a second. Um, a couple, when we, before we do the, the next one, a couple other little accessories I want to talk about. These Akaya dosing cups. I like these guys. Um, if you want to grind right in, and I'm going to get rid of my old grind size here. So you grind right into these cups. And then what's really nice with these is they are met, meant to fit the size of a filter basket. So imagine I have my portafilter attached here. And if you like to dose like that, you can do that. They have a larger one here. Now I've got some beans in here. If you're doing single dosing, um, or if you're having issues with static, the trick is, and this is another accessory, this is a fine mist sprayer. Um, so it does a little fine mist. It's called RDT, or the Ross Droplet Technique. So you spray your beans, and then I kind of like to shake them up like that. And then if I was using a single dosing grinder, I could pour that into the grinder and grind that. And that little bit of RDT really helps reduce the static, and especially in a single dosing grinder, it's going to help you get every single last bit of ground coffee out. Like uh, this is the E37S, the SD models, a single, single doser, and a few put 18 grams in a cup, give it a spray where you're adding maybe a tenth of a gram and grind, you're going to get 18 grams out. It's pretty amazing. Uh, a couple of other little things I have here, the two shot pitchers. I'll show these over here. So I have the rattle wearer. A lot of people will be familiar with these. Um, three ounce total. Um, and then that's a two spout. This uh, other one here that we have, that's a three spout. These are very, very handy for this kind of thing. But let's do another shot and see how we do. So pull another bottom. If you have any questions, um, I see our moderators are kind of on there taking care of things. Um, so I'm going to pull that out. Again, I like it dry when I grind. We'll see how we did. Now, I did change my grind a little bit finer. So in theory, I'm going to tear out my portafilter again. I really do love how this works on this. I don't think that's really what it's intended for, but something I like to do. In theory, I should get just a slight, uh, just a little bit less weight here because I decreased the grind size. But we'll see what we get. Yeah, and I was shooting, I had dialed in at 18.5, now at 18.3. I'm okay with that. Two tenths of a gram, that's fine for me. Uh, but I did decrease the grind size, which, you know, made, based on timed grinding, made the amount of grinds I got out just a little bit lighter. So we'll do the uh, Bravo distributor here again. Again, the piston here, if you can see that, kind of, it just kind of drops down slightly. And you can adjust this so the speed that it does that can change. I'm just going to set that in and, again, go clockwise first. And thanks, Danilo, for <laughs> giving me a few minutes this morning. And then counterclockwise. Then I'll take our tamper here. Again, we should have these wood ones soon. And again, these are expensive, but I just like where you really don't even have to think about angling your, your filter, your portafilter when you're doing your tamp, and it's beautiful. We'll lock that in. Let's see if we do any better here. I'm going to use that, uh, I'll use that triple spout filter. I'm going to set this so you guys can see over here the volume, because I do want to talk about that. So I'll tear that, and here we go. And let's see, in theory, that should have we should have our shot come a little sooner. Again, I'm going to look underneath and see, and we're look a little better. I don't see any major spurts. It was nice, even development. Well, there's a tiny little spurt. That's okay. But this one is appearing to come a little slower. Another little spurt there. So I may need to work my tamper a little bit. And I'm, uh, we'll cut it there. And I ended at uh, just a hair under 36 grams in 24 seconds. There's that shot again. But those bottomless, oh, what I do want to say, so I get this question all the time. It says, you know, I saw you pull a shot and you were doing a one to two ratio with 18 grams and it was way over the, you know, 40 milliliters about. This shot with the crema came up to nearly 70 milliliters, but this shot weighs just a hair under 36 grams. So you can't use volume, especially in a coffee like this, uh, to do brew ratios. You really have to have a scale. Uh, because that creme is going to be very, very deceiving. And I want to get a better taste of this one. So I'm going to get my little spoon, because I like to stir <laughs> before I taste. Get that in. That looks really nice. Mm. 
that, that, one's, that one's a little better than that one was, and it should be. But it didn't go bitter or anything. Oh, that's great. I do like that. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, the machine I was using. Um, do a week from today, I'm going to start doing some flow profiles. This is the Pro 700. Had this in my uh, live stream on Tuesday with flow control. I have the flow here set just to the standard, like a, about 11 gram per second flow rate. But I'm going to do some really cool flow profiling starting a week from today. We'll do some very specific flow profiles. You know, if you have a really fresh coffee, you can tone down the brightness, stuff like that. Or if you have an older coffee or a dark roast, there's different ways you can uh, work with that. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. Um, this machine is plumbed in, by the way. I love plumbing in machines. I hate filling reservoirs, so I do have my water line over there. Uh, let's see, we talked about the dosing cups. Uh, talked about the Bravo. I think that's, that kind of covers it. Again, I, let me, I just want to show you that shower screen one more time. And again, cleaning these is like awesome, like that. And it's, can you, can you look up in there, babe? I mean, it's, it's clean. And again, the dispersion of the water from that, instead of that single stream, you're getting your whole puck wet at the same time. Oh, and a little thing about filter baskets, something else I want to talk about. Now, I was using an 18 gram basket and a 18 and a half grams or so in a dose. Now, you can go up, I've done triple shots before, do check the link to see those. Um, so you may want a bigger basket. The way to tell, you do want some headroom. So like when you make an espresso, you do want some space between your, the surface of your coffee puck and the shower screen. So if you ever see an imprint of your shower screen, either your dose is too high or your basket is too small. So if you see that, you either need to decrease your dose or get a bigger uh, filter basket. Um, oh, one other tool that's kind of fun. I do have a, yeah, I do have one over here. This little, we have these little uh, levers, these little porta filter or filter basket removal levers. You know, there's a million ways to do these. A lot of times I'll just use another filter basket to get one out, but they do lever up nice and help you get change out um, a filter basket like that. And then I'm ready to get this dirty stock basket. So there, there is a stock basket, by the way, that has that, that, uh, th that it, uh, what am I call angle down towards where the holes are actually in the basket compared to these uh, Barista Pro baskets, which are straight down. And the holes, I, it's going to be really hard to tell, but if you look at these holes under a microscope, they're much more round and circular than this. A lot of the stock baskets, they kind of punch them through um, and they don't look that great. And you can see this one's kind of gooey. If it was, had that nanotech coating on it, you could clean that up real easy. I mean, this one would clean up too, but it's just easier with the nanotech. Um, so I think that's about it. How's our time looking? Where are we at? We're at 22 minutes. I try to keep them about 25. So let me see if there's a question or two. Uh, let's see. Aaron, what about the middle of the shower screen? There are no holes in the middle, so how does it saturate the middle of the puck? That's actually a good question. So I think it's going to come around, and they're a little different depending on which one you work. Some have some, but that, that water that's in here, you see how tight the circles are, so it's, it is going to get this center of your puck. And especially if you had that headroom I was talking about, so you don't want your coffee puck directly against the screen. So if you have the headroom, you're going to get the flow all around the outside and it's going to hit, it'll get to the center. Um, and it's going to be much better than that stock. If you were watching earlier, the stock shower screen where pretty much all the water just ends up coming right to the center and it takes some time to get out to the edges. Um, so I do like that more even connection. Um, let's see. How do I clean off my stainless frothing one? It has crusted milk on it. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'll, I'll show you what I use. And nobody, some people may not like this. There's plenty of milk sort of cleaners. If I've got milk crusted all over wand, first of all, wipe your wand right after you're done uh, frothing, right? And then you won't get that crusty buildup. I use something with ammonia in it. Soak a rag like that. Leave it on there for, I don't know, 10 or 15, 20 seconds, and you'd be surprised. Now, of course, you know, you do want to give a purge and I'd wipe that, you know, ammonia honestly is pretty benign. Um, 
give it a purge, but yeah, always purge your wand before, wipe your wand after frothing, and purge, purge after frothing, because if your wand's in your milk and all of a sudden you cut the heat, um, as, as the gases inside the wand con contract, they're going to suck milk back up into the wand. And we have seen cases where that's happened to such an extent that it's brought milk right back into a boiler, and that's gross and smelly. You don't want to do that. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, which way to put the gasket in? Um, well, like I usually go, so on this, on the yellow one here that I used, it's got a little curved here, so I leave the flat to the bottom. Um, there's also, there's a little imprint, going to be really hard to see here, but it tells you what it is here. So, I mean, honestly, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, but I would go flat. So I'd put the curve up. It's also going to help you get it in the little channel, that curve. It helps you get it up in there. Um, you can see how easy it was to get these up in here because they're a little more flexible than these hard gaskets, the hard stock gaskets. And this one's, this is one I took out. And you can see the difference here with some use, what happened. So there's, on a, here, let me get that close. So you can see the difference. And this one isn't particularly used. I've seen them much, much worse. Um, but that's pretty much, so they end up getting hard and they shrink. And I've had to like, you know, pull them out in pieces before. So that is, if there's any more, okay. So I think, I think we're good there. I do appreciate you joining me. See, we got about 165 people watching right now. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I will be back next Tuesday. We're going to talk about the perfect puck. I'm going to get my, uh, my Bravo working a little bit better. Thanks to Nilo Lodi again, uh, a WBC judge who really likes these. He trains a lot of baristas down in South America and other parts of the world. Um, and he just feels that these give the utmost consistency, and I really do too. Um, then a week from today, we'll start getting into flow control, and I'm going to do like kind of one live stream at a time with a you know, very specific profile that you can use with the flow control on the Proftec Pro 700 here. That flow control is also available on the Pro 600, Pro 500, the ECM Synchronica, the ECM Classica, PID single boiler machine. Um, it just opens up a whole world of possibilities. And actually, Danilo, you know, if you really want to go really high-end with flow profiling, uh, Danilo is also a coffee pro with Dalla Corte, and they make just one of the most impressive machines when it comes to flow profiling, the Mina. Uh, we'll be talking more about that down the road. So please, everyone stay safe. Thanks for joining me. Use those comments if you have questions, if you're watching after the fact. I do always try and give a detailed response, and we'll see you back here next Monday for another live stream on how to get the perfect puck at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks a lot, guys.